Hi, I'm Clay with Jaded Brewing. As you can see, there's a lot of different options of wort chillers out there. Whether you're brand new to brewing or you've been brewing for years and you're looking for a new chiller, it's important to know some pros and cons of each style of chiller so you can find the one that works best for your setup. So let's take a look at a basic overview of the different styles of wort chillers. The most popular style of wort chiller is called an immersion chiller, also referred to as an IC. Immersion chillers are wort chillers that you immerse into your kettle of hot wort. You hook up cold water supply to it, the cold water runs through the coil, heat's transferred from the hot wort into the water running through the coil, and hot water comes out, dropping the temperature of your entire batch at the same time. That's it. They're very easy to use. All you need is a chiller and cold water supply. You can hook up to your garden hose or kitchen faucet, utility faucet, or you can just use a pump, pump ice water through it. That's all you need. So they're very simple to use. A single coil immersion chiller like this is a traditional immersion chiller that can be found at any local homebrew store. They come in copper or stainless steel tubing. And even though they are faster than an ice bath, the speed of chilling doesn't really compare to a counterflow chiller or a plate chiller with a standard coil. However, Jaded's immersion chillers are essentially three of these chillers working at the same time. So there's three separate cold water supplies coming in and only one hookup, giving it speeds that are comparable to a plate chiller or a counterflow chiller. A standard immersion chiller like this is easy to DIY. There's a lot of YouTube tutorials, Beer and Barbecue by Larry, Don Osborne, Bobby from New Jersey, all have great tutorials on how to make your own. You just go to your local home improvement store, get a coil of copper, and wind it. Just make sure not to kink it, and you're good. Along with being so simple to use, they're also simple to maintain and to clean. I always recommend saving the first water that comes out of the chiller. It's extremely hot water save it in a brew bucket immediately after using your immersion chiller and your wort just put it into the bucket of water and then finish your brew day up and then when you're done with that and you're doing cleanup take it out of the water hose it off with some clean water pat it dry with a soft towel and then you just store it in a safe place it's not going to get too dirty and gross and you're ready for your next brew day because they're so simple to use and so easy to maintain, and with the jaded chillers having speeds comparable to counterflow chillers or plate chillers, a lot of brewers prefer an immersion chiller as their chilling method. Another style of wort chiller is called a counterflow wort chiller, or CFC. A counterflow wort chiller works by having an outer tube and an inner tube. The inner tube is where the hot wort travels and the outer tube is where the cool water surrounds the hot wort tube. So when you're using a counterflow wort chiller, you run the water one direction and the wort flows the opposite direction. They flow counter to each other. So it's counter flow. The reason for this is for greater temperature differential, which leads to better efficiency in chilling. There's several different styles of counterflow wort chillers. There's the twisted metal type style over here that is a like shell and shell or tube and tube style that has copper tube with inside a copper tube. They also have these with stainless steel tubing inside stainless steel. There's the jaded cyclone counterflow wort chiller, which is fully inspectable on the inside. So it's very similar in functionality as the twisted metal style but you can inspect anywhere that the hot, sticky wart touches to make sure that it's clean and ready for your next brew day. This style, which is the garden hose type style that has a copper tube with inside either a plastic or a rubber shell on the outside. This style is able to be DIY'd. There's the late 
Paul Wicksteed has a YouTube channel, Time for Another One, that has a good tutorial on how to make your own counterflow wart chiller out of garden hose and tubing. It's definitely possible to do that. You just need a little more material than an immersion chiller, and you also need more knowledge on how to put it together, but it's definitely doable if you're uh, into DIYing your projects. One thing to remember with counterflow wart chillers is that unless you can see the inside of it, like the Jaded Cyclone, definitely have a um, cleaning regimen that you'll be able to ensure the best possible way to keep the inside of it clean, since the, the sticky wart and hops and all the junk goes inside of it and you can't see it. You'll need to flush a PBW until it's running clear and then make sure you sanitize it prior to using it in a brew day. Put boiling wort through it to help sanitize it to help kill off any little critters that might be around in there. Another thing to think about with counterflow wort chillers is that it takes additional silicone tubing and fittings and valves and whatever your system is set up for to get from your kettle through the chiller and then either straight to the fermenter or if you're going to recirculate back to your chiller you'll need food grade pump and all the uh, associated fittings and uh, extra materials that way so if you're okay with a little additional materials and cleaning and you have confidence in your cleaning regimen a counterflow chiller might be right for you another style of wort chiller for home brewers is called a plate chiller Plate chillers are constructed of a series of thin stainless steel plates that are copper brazed together into one unit. Similar to a counterflow chiller, the wort gets chilled as it travels through the plate chiller. Also similar to a counterflow chiller, with a plate chiller you need additional high temperature silicone tubing and fittings and valves and whatever you need in your system to go from your kettle either through the chiller to a fermenter or through the chiller and back into the kettle you're going to recirculate you'd also need a food grade pump for that to move the wort around. The plate chiller works similarly to a counterflow chiller in that it has between the plates water travels one way and hot wort travels the other way. However with a plate chiller the large plate surface area to the volume ratio is so great that it's very efficient at heat transfer between two liquids. Professional breweries use them for that reason. In a professional brewery, the plates are put together with gaskets in the middle and then they're bolted together so they can be removed and cleaned. However, with a home brewing application, this is not a DIY and it's not able to be pulled apart to be cleaned. Because of that, it, uh, it takes a large amount of care and a large amount of cleaning if you're going to properly clean a plate chiller. With the insides looking like this, there's a lot of places for sticky hot wort and hops and trub and a bunch of different um, particles to get stuck and not come out. There's a lot of different methods that people use to try to clean their plate chillers, including baking them in the oven for 500, at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for a couple hours and using caustic solution in them to try to get all the organic material out of there. The bare minimum recommendation is to back flush after using to push everything in these plates that is going one way to try to dislodge it by pushing it the other way. So plate chillers clog very easily. That's why if you're going to use a plate chiller it's a strong recommendation to use a filtration system for your wort before it enters the plate chiller so you can get as clear of a liquid going into the plate chiller as possible to help maintain this, the longevity of your plate chiller so you don't have stuff growing inside. Like I said, they're very efficient at heat transfer. If you don't mind the extra care that it takes to take care of the cleaning of it and sanitization of it and the extra fittings and pumps needed, then a plate chiller might be right for you. Well, I hope you found this basic overview of different types of chillers helpful in some way. Ask us any questions, send them to jadedbrewing at gmail.com and check out our other videos and we'll see you along the way.